All right, so this should be um, at number 11 in our math finder. Um, starting with number one, please remember the goal here is to do the opposite every single time. So on number one, that's an addition problem. The opposite adding is to subtract. You're always using the number that's with the variable. So since it's addition, I know I'm going to do subtraction, and I'm subtracting 9 since that's on the same side as B. And you'll notice I'm writing it underneath the 9. I need to make sure my numbers are lined up. And then I'm also going to write it on the other side, minus 9. So my 9 minus 9, that cancels and goes away. I'm going to bring down my B and keep my equal sign where that line is. 14 minus 9 is going to leave me with 5. So my answer is B equals 5. I am going to check that. So when I check it, we always want to make sure that we're using that original problem. So where it says 9 plus B, instead of writing, so I'm going to write 9 plus, and instead of writing B, I know B is 5, so I'm going to do 9 plus 5. And if I add 9 plus 5 together, I do get 14, which is what it said right there. So that checks, and I get the right answer. All right, all this means is that my answer was right in the beginning. All right, remember, B, plus five, B equals 5 is your answer. All right, for number 2, I have a subtraction problem, which means I'm going to do the opposite, which is add. All right, I'm adding 2 because 2 is what's next to X, and I have to do it on both sides. All right, on the side with X, my minus 2 and my plus 2, that goes away because they're opposites, and I'm left with just X equals, and 5 plus 2 is 7. All right, checking that. Again, I'm going to look at my problem which my problem said x minus 2. So instead of writing x, I'm going to put 7 minus 2. And 7 minus 2 is 5, which is what it had at the beginning. So that's what we needed. All right, number 3. So number 3, this is like what we talked about um, in Wednesday's class. All right, 13 and w, when they're right next to each other, that means we're multiplying. The opposite of multiplying is to divide. Remember, our new way to write our division symbol is with that fraction bar. And the number that I'm dividing by is 13 because it's next to W. So I'm going to divide both sides by 13. My 13s cancel, leaving me with W equals 39 divided by 13. That should go three times. And I'm going to check my answer in just a moment to make sure. So I get W equals 3. Alright, so when I check this, when I check this, if you look at the problem, it says 13W. Remember, that means multiplication. So I'm going to do 13 times W, but I found out W was 3. So I'm going to put times 3 right there. Alright, 3 times 3 is 9, and 3 times 1 is 3, so I get 39, which is what was in the original problem. So I got the right answer. All right, number four. Again, there's my equal sign. There's my line. Just splitting it in two. All right. On number four, this one I've seen give some people some trouble today. That says P divided by four. Remember that fraction bar is division. The opposite of dividing is to multiply. So I want to make sure that I'm multiplying by four. Remember, this is where we're using that new technique because it's what you're going to have to do in the seventh grade. So we're going to put the four next to the P in parentheses. And then I'm also going to put it next to the 12. All right? So now over here, we'll see a 4 on top and a 4 on bottom. That can cancel. That's going to leave me with P equals 12 times 4 is going to give me 48. All right, again, we're going to check that right now. All right, when I check it, I'm looking at that original problem. My original problem said P over 4 which means P divided by 4. So guys, just to make sure that I'm checking this completely and not just like putting my numbers in place, P is 48, so I'm going to put that on the inside, divided by the number on bottom, which is 4. All right, so 4 will go into 4 one time. 1 times 4 is 4. Subtracting at 0, bring down the 8. 4 will go into 8 two times. 2 times 4 is 8. When I subtract, I get 0. There's nothing left. So I got 12, which was what my original problem said as well. So we did get the correct answer. All right. Number 5. Splitting that again. All right. This says minus 7. We want to do the opposite. So we're going to do plus 7. And I'm going to do it on both sides. 
Guys, please remember I do want us to show that that minus 7 and plus 7, those are going away, leaving me with just t equals, and then we're going to do 19 plus 7. 9 plus 7 is 16, carry my 1, 1 and 1 is 2. So I end up with t equals 26, all right, and we're going to check our work. All right, so when I check my work, I am going to line this up because 26 minus 7, I could do that in my head, but I don't want to make any mistakes that are silly on my test. So here where it says t minus 7, that's what I'm going to work out. t was 26, and I'm going to subtract 7 from that. I'm going to do this the long way just to double, make sure I'm really checking my answer. 6 minus 7, I can't do. So I'm going to borrow from 2, making it 1. So 6 is 16. 16 minus 7 is 9, and then we bring down our 1. Okay. So I get 19, which is what my original problem said. All right, on number six, I have 96 equals 12, and that is an F. I think um, my printer cut some of that off. That is an F, though. All right, 12F, this is multiplication because they're right next to each other. The opposite of multiplication is to divide. So I'm going to put a division symbol, which is my fraction bar. And the number that I'm dividing by is whatever's with my variable, so that's going to be 12. All right, so I get 96 divided by 12. Hopefully, we know our multiplication facts for 12. That should be 8 equals top and bottom 12 cancel, leaving me with F. All right, and we are going to check that. When I check that, if you'll notice, my original problem said 12F. So 12 times, because if they're next to each other, that's multiplication, and I had the F was 8. So I'm going to work this out the long way just to make sure I do know those facts correctly. 8 times 2 is 16. Carry my 1. 8 times 1 is 8 plus the 1 is 9. So I got 96, and 96 is what it said in the original. All right, on number 7, again, splitting it. I have 11 equals r over 13. Again, I only care where the variable is. And I see that that has a fraction bar, so I know this is division. The opposite of dividing is to multiply. So I'm going to put 13 next to r because that means multiplication. If I do it on one side, I'm going to do it to the other. So um, I'm going to start with the easy part. I know my 13 on top and 13 on bottom are going to go away. So I have r over there. But now I need to do 13 times 11. Okay? Um, that might be a fact you know. It might not. So if we need to, we can always go over to the side. 13 times 11. 1 times 3 is one is 3, 1 times 1 is 1, put my 0, 1 times 3 is 3, 1 times 1 is 1. When I add that up, I got 143. And that was just my scratch work to the side, not actually part of my working the problem. Some of us were able to do that in our head. That's awesome. All right. We do need to check this still, though. So checking. All right. Again, I'm going to look at that original, original problem there. All right, so it says R, my R was 143, and we're dividing that because it says division. We're dividing it by 13. That was the number on the bottom. Okay, so 13 won't go into 1. 13 will go into 14 one time. 1 times 13 is 13. When I subtract, I get 1. Bring down my 3. 13 will go into 13 one time. 1 times 13 is 13. I subtract, I get zero. So my answer when I divided that, I got 11, which was in the original problem. So that's what we're looking for. All right, again, please make sure when we're checking, we're always using that original piece that's highlighted. All right, number eight. Number eight, this is an addition problem, so we're going to have to do the opposite. The opposite adding is to subtract. The number that we're going to subtract is what's next to my letter. So we're subtracting the 1.9. And we're going to make sure we do that to both sides. Okay. So here, 1.9 and 1.9, that goes away. So I'm left with just y equals. All right, 8 minus 9, we can't do. So I'm going to borrow from 4. That makes it 3. And 8 becomes 18. You'll notice, guys, I did this subconsciously without really thinking about it. But I did make sure that those decimals were lined up. Whenever we're adding and subtracting, make sure our decimals are lined up. All right, so I have 18 minus 9 which is 9. I'm going to keep my decimal down in the center. And then 3 minus 1 gives me 2. So I have y equals 2.9.
Okay, and now we need to check it. All right, when I check it, I'm always going back to that original problem. It said 1.9 first, so I'm going to do 1.9, and then it says plus y, and I found out y was 2.9, lining those decimals up carefully. All right, 9 plus 9 is 18, carry my 1, keep my decimal in the center. 1, 1, and 2 gives me 4. 4.8 was what was under those X marks, marking those out. All right, let's look at the next row, the next row. So this is where we get some fractions happening. This is the part that I'm hoping will kind of slow down on if you're checking yours at home. Please, guys, make sure. I know that some of us got stuck on these, but if you're having to watch this video to get these problems, please make sure you understand what's happening. If you don't, you really need to come see me in the morning so we can practice with some more of these, all right? Um, number 15, though. Number 15 doesn't have a fraction. All right, it just says 15s. They're right next to each other. That's multiplication. The opposite is division. All right, so I'm going to divide by 15 since 15 is what's next to my variable, next to my letter. 15s go away. 15 divided by 15 is 1s, which is just s. Let me make sure my s looks like an s and not a 5. All right, and then 120 divided by 15. Again, if I need to go to the side and work that out, I can. All right, um, this is going to be 8. All right, I happen to know enough about the 15 that I know that's going to be 8. If we need to work it out, go to the side. Do you list out your multiplication facts for 15. All right, we do need to check that now. So I'm going to check that, see where it says 15s. That's what we're going to use to check it. So I'm going to do 15, and then s is next to it, so that means times. And the number I'm using is 8, because that's what I got for my answer. 8 times 5 is 40, carry the 4. 8 times 1 is 8, plus 4 is... 12. So I get 120, which is what the problem said. All right, number 10, getting into fraction world. Here we go. Make sure we understand what's going on on these. All right, number 10. I know it has a fraction, but guys, again, I don't care about the fraction. I care about what operation it is. If that says minus, the opposite is plus. So we should be doing plus 1 twelfth. All right, remember guys, if you want to, Write our fraction next to each other for our addition. You can put plus 1 twelfth right next to it. That might make it a little bit easier for you. All right, make sure we're showing my minus 1 twelfth and plus 1 twelfth. Those are opposite, so mark those out. My folks that are in here right now, I'd make sure we're following this because this is one of the harder parts. All right, so my 1 twelfth go away, leave me with D. All right, so now I have 5 twelfths plus 1 twelfth. I can add those together since they both have 12 on the bottom. So 5 plus 1 is... 6, and then that 12 that matches, we leave that the way it is. All right? Guys, potentially we'll be done. This would be a great answer. The only problem is 6 and 12 can simplify. So I'm going to simplify these both by dividing by 6. So I get that D equals 6 divided by 6 is 1. 12 divided by 6 is 2. So hopefully we know that 6 over 12 is the same as 1 half. All right, number 11. Number 11, where we kind of have struggled a little bit. Oh, I forgot to check this. Sorry. Let's check this real quick. Checking it. All right, so I have 1 half for D. So, again, we're using exactly what it said here. All right, so we have D, which is 1 half. Ladies and gentlemen, I need y'all to have a seat. I need those put away. All right, so I have 1 half, because that's my D, minus, and then over here it says 1 twelfth. All right, guys, right now I can't do anything with that because my bottom numbers don't match. But if I multiply 2 times 6, that would make it match 12. But if I do it to the bottom, we need to do it to the top. So right here I have 6 over 12 minus 1 twelfth. And, guys, you'll notice 6 over 12, that's what I had before I simplified. So I end up using that again. 6 minus 1 gives me 5 over 12. That's what we had originally, so that answer was good. All right, number 11. I'm kind of squishing into my space. Um, All right, let's look at number 11. Number 11. So number 11 says 5, 6, K. 
Since they are right next to each other, we know that's multiplication. So the opposite of multiplying is going to be to divide. So we're going to divide both sides by 5 6. And I'm just going to put it right here next to it, divided by 5 6. Now some of y'all did, I showed y'all a shortcut in class. If you're using the shortcut, I'm absolutely fine with that. This is just that long technical way to work it out that some of us felt a little bit more comfortable with. So again, that's multiplication. The opposite is dividing. So these are going to go away. Leave me with K equals. All right, so now I've got to divide my fractions. And we've got to remember that to divide fractions, you keep, change, flip. So we're going to keep 1 6. We're going to change it to multiplication. And we're going to flip the fraction. All right, and I'm okay with using that dot, dot, and the X time symbol to, on these just because they are fractions. We're not going to overcomplicate that with um, the division bar symbol and stuff like that, okay? So we keep change flip. Now I do want to check and see if I can simplify because I don't, if I don't simplify here while the numbers are small, I'm going to have to simplify at the end. So let's go ahead and see now. If, I, if you notice, guys, I have a 6 on top and a 6 on bottom. So 6 can go into 6 once, 6 will go into 6 once. So we're just simplifying those now while they're small and easy. Remember, you can only do that when we're multiplying. So now on the top it says 1 times 1, which is 1. And on the bottom, 1 times 5 is 5. So I get k equals 1 fifth. All right, and we do need to check that. So when I check it, all right, again, going back to that original problem where it said 5 6 k. So I'm going to put 5 6. Remember, if k is right next to it, that's multiplication. And we're multiplying it by 1 fifth. All right, again, checking to see if I can simplify. A 5 on top, 5 divided by 5 is 1. And 5 on bottom, 5 divided by 5 is 1. Those will simplify. So now when I multiply, 1 times 1 is 1. 6 times 1 is 6. So if you look up here, see where we had 1 6? And now we got 1 6. So our answer was correct. 1 fifth is what we were looking for. All right, number 12. Number 12. And guys, I do want to point out on the review, like in the reminder that I sent out tonight, I said they're the exact same. On the quiz tomorrow, number 10 is a subtraction problem with a fraction. Number 11 is a multiplication problem with a fraction. Number 12 is an addition problem with a fraction. The numbers will be a little bit different, but the Technique will be the exact same, so make sure we're comfortable and confident in these. All right, so right here we can see it's addition. The opposite of adding is to subtract, so I'm going to subtract two tenths. And if I do it to one side, I've got to do it to the other. Okay. So right here, my two tenths minus two tenths, that's going to go away, leaving me with just the K on that side. So that's the easy part. I like doing the easy part. Get it out of the way. All right, so now I need to subtract these. Now remember, with addition and subtraction, that bottom number has to match. That's not happening right now, but I can make 5 match 10 really easily by multiplying it by 2. And if I multiply the bottom by 2, I'm going to need to do the top by 2. So now if I look at this, it's going to say 2, not 2, 2 times 2 is 4. So that should be 4, pardon my really ugly 4. 4, and then 5 times 2 is 10, so I get 4 tenths. And then it's still minus 2 tenths. So now that they both have that same denominator, now I can subtract them. 4 minus 2 is 2, and my bottom number is still 10. So we actually end up with 2 tenths as our answer here. Now I want you to think about this. Is 2 tenths a fraction that I can just leave? Can I leave it like that? All right, 2 is an even number, 10 is an even number, so I'm going to have to divide these. I'm going to simplify by dividing them by 2. So 2 divided by 2 is 1. 10 divided by 2 is 5. So my answer is actually 1 fifth equals K. Looks kind of familiar. <laughs> All right, let's check this. So checking it, here you can see where I have 2 tenths plus K. And guys, um, tomorrow on the quiz, I'm going to ask you to do your checking on a separate sheet of paper so everything's not squished like this. All right, but this is just so that it can all be seen together in the video. All right, so, my, so right here it says 2 tenths. So I'm going to start with 2 tenths plus K. And remember, K is now 1 fifth. Now, again, I can't add those right now because they don't have the same denominator. But if you'll remember, 1 fifth came from 2 tenths. So I can just multiply the top and bottom here by 2. So now I have 2 tenths plus 1 times 2 
is 2. 5 times 2 is 10. So I get 2 tenths plus 10 tenths. When I add that, I get 4 tenths. Now, 4 tenths, oh, look, we're getting closer. All right, you, you're kind of actually end up working this backwards a little bit. All right, 4 tenths, those are even numbers, so we need to divide those by 2. All right, 4 divided by 2 is 2. 10 divided by 2 is 5. So I get 2 fifths which is exactly what was given to me in the beginning, so we checked that correctly. All right? So now those challenging problems are out of the way. We got the fractions taken care of. Please remember, if you're having trouble with me, these, come see me in the morning. I do not have morning duty tomorrow, so my door will be open at 7. All right, number 13. And I just realized this is sticking up in the way. There we go. Number 13, 4.7 equals R divided by 5. All right, whenever I see that fraction bar, I should be thinking division, and I've got to do the opposite, which is to multiply. So I'm going to put R times 5, because that's the opposite of R divided by 5. And if I do times 5 over there, I'm going to have to do times 5 over here. So here again, let's get the easy part out of the way. 5 on top, 5 on bottom. Goes away, leave me with R. All right, so now I've got to multiply this. So I'm going to go over to the side real quick, 4.7 times 5. Okay, let me actually move that there. We can see it now. All right, 5 times 7 is 35. Carry my 3. 5 times 4 is 20 plus 3, 23. All right, now we've got to remember, guys, this was a decimal. Remember, you don't bring the decimal straight down. You look in the problem. There's one number after the decimal. So there's going to be one number after the decimal in my answer. So I get 23.5. Okay. So there's my answer. We need to check it. Yes, it kind of gave us a little bit more space down here, I think. So that's nice. All right. Looking back at the original problem where it says R divided by 5. Again, when these numbers get a little bit more complicated, we do want to do that division like in the house. So I'm going to take R, which is on top. It's going to go in the house. So that's 25, 23, sorry, 23.5. And we're dividing that by the number on bottom, which was 5. Remember, we don't have a decimal at the door, so we're good there. But the one in the house, we're going to raise to the roof. That goes up to the roof. All right. So 5 will not go into 2, but 5 will go into 23 four times. 4 times 5 is 20. When I subtract, I get 3. Remember, this was a really ugly 3, but it's a 3. All right, bring down the 5. 5 goes into 35 seven times. 5 times 7. 35, we get 0. So I got 4.7 there, which was exactly what we had to start with. So my original answer of 23.5 was perfect. All right, number 14. 0 0.8 and B, they're right next to each other. So the opposite of that, if they're right next to each other, that's multiplication. So the opposite is going to be to divide. So we're going to draw our fraction bar as our division sign. The number I'm dividing by is 0.8 because that's attached to B. So 0.8. And then I'm going to do the same thing over here. Divide by 0.8. Okay. So let's get the easy part out of the way. 0.8 divided by 0.8. That cancels. We get 1B, which is just B. All right. So now, ooh, that looks kind of messy. All right. But it's okay, guys, because we can go over to the side and work it out. So... 1.12 is on top. This would be a good time to use that scratch sheet of paper, use a separate page. I'm going to try to put it all in here where we can see it. 1.12 is in the house because it's on top. 0 0.8 is the one at the door since it's on bottom. All right, now remember, when we divide, guys, that was that. We can't have a decimal at the door, so we're going to have to move it over once. And if I move it once at the door, I move it once in the... House. So it's going to go straight up. Make sure it's between the 1 and 2. And you can see my 1 and 2 end up kind of close to each other, so I'm having to be really careful with that. All right, so now we're ready to actually do this division. Again, I know this is a little bit longer, but it's because of these decimals. It's because of these decimals. We, we need to take a little bit more time with the division, okay? All right, so 8 won't go into 1. 8 will go into 11. One time. 1 times 8 is 8. All right, 11 minus 8, if I subtract that, it should give me 3. We're going to bring down the 2. 8 will go into 32 four times. 4 times 8 is 32. When I subtract, I get 0. Guys, if you're doing this division and you're getting some crazy-looking stuff, we probably made a mistake somewhere. All right, so I get 1.4 when I divide that. 
So 1.12 divided by 0 0.8 is 1.4. Okay, and now we're ready to check it. So when I check it, now guys, I like checking. Checking on this is going to be actually easier than the work because if I look at the checking, it's 0 0.8 times B. So I have 0 0.8 times B, which is 1.4. Okay, so I'm going to multiply this very carefully. So 4 times 8 is 32. Put my 2, carry my 3. 4 times 0 is 0, plus 3 is just 3. So I end up with 32 there because that's 0, which is fine. All right, remember we got to multiply by the 1, so I'm going to put a 0 as placeholder. 1 times 8 is 8. 1 times 0 is 0. So let's add that up. 2 and 0 is 2. 3 and 8 is 11. Carry my 1. And then I have um, 1 and 0, which is 1. All right, now you've got to be careful. Remember, my decimal isn't just going straight down. I've got to count. There are two numbers after the decimal in the problem. So I want two numbers after the decimal in my answer. All right, so look, 1.12, 1.12, we did it good. All right, even though this was a little bit longer because of the decimal work, we still made it through it. Good job, guys. All right, number 15. We're making it. We're almost there, guys. Hold on. We can do it. All right, so this says addition. The opposite of adding is to subtract. And the number you're going to subtract is whatever is next to your variable. So we're doing minus 3.5. If I do it to one side, I need to do it to the other. Okay. Let's see the easy part first. 3.5 minus 3.5. That goes away. Yes, please, you've got to show me that that's canceling. Because <coughs> that's what lets A be by itself. So I have A. <coughs> let's subtract this. 8 minus 5 is 3. I'm going to keep my decimal. 7 minus 3 is 4. So I get 4.3 equals A. Alright, but we do want to check that. Again guys, when I check it, I'm looking at the original problem, which said 3.5, and since that's first, it's going to go on top, plus A, which is 4.3. Make sure we're lining the decimals up there. Okay, 5 plus 3 is 8. Keep my decimal. Seven, uh, 3 plus 4 is 7. So I got 7.8, which is what we had. Excellent job. All right. Number 16. Number 16. So again, I see that fraction bar, which to me means division. Automatically, we're thinking about division. All right. The opposite of dividing is to multiply. So I'm going to put times 0 0.3. And I know I got some work there. I'm having to squeeze it in. And if I do times 0 0.3 there, we're going to have to do times 0 0.3 on the other side. So here we can see, let's do the easy part, 0 0.3 on top and bottom go away, leaving me with R. Okay. Now again, this is a frac these are decimals, so I'm going to be careful when I multiply. 1.9 times 0 0.3, just going over to the side, because guys, I can't do that in my head. Some of you can, because y'all are super smart, and I know that. For those of us that can't, hey, you're in my boat, all right? We're going to work it out. I'd rather be safe than sorry. 3 times 9 is 27. I'm going to carry the 2. 3 times 1 is 3, plus the 2 is 5. Now, remember, guys, this was a multiplication problem, so I'm not bringing the decimal straight down. I'm counting. Two numbers after the decimal mean two numbers after the decimal in my answer. For adding and subtracting, we line them up. For um, multiplying, we count over. All right? Um, and you can see I circled the wrong, circled it in the wrong spot. Sorry. Here's my work. It's not where I'm circling it. Got a little excited because we had our answer. All right? But I need to write that answer over here by my R. So point five seven. If you want to put a zero in front, you can absolutely put a zero there. That's up to you. All right, so let's check this now. Let's check it. I'm going to get rid of this line. It's kind of in my way. All right, looking at the original problem, R divided by 0 0.3. R is on top, so R is going to go in the house. So I have 0 0.57 in the house. And then at the door, we're going to have 0 0.3. 
All right, remember, we can't have a decimal at the door, so we're going to have to move that over once. If I move it once there, we move it once in the house, and let's raise it up to the roof. All right, so guys, we're just dividing 3. So 3 will go into 5 one time. 1 times 3 is 3 when I subtract. Make sure you multiply correctly. I did this for someone earlier, and I did this all wrong, okay? So 5 minus 3 is 2. Bring down the 7. 3 goes into 27 nine times. Again, guys, make sure you have raised that decimal up. There should be a decimal in between them. 9 times 3 is 27. When I subtract, I get 0. So you can see there's my 1.9. There's my 1.9. They match. Our answer was correct. Okay. Let's look at number 17. Number 17. All right, draw my line. All right. Um, T plus 1.2 equals 1.9. The opposite of adding is subtracting. I'm going to do it on both sides. Making sure you line up your decimals because on adding and subtracting, those decimals have to be in a straight line. So here, easy part, 1.2 and 1.2 go away. So I'm left with T equals <coughs> 9 minus 2 is 7. Keep my decimal. And then 1 minus 1 is 0. So I got that T is 0 0.7. Oh. All right, and now I'm going to make sure I plug it back into the original problem. So I like highlighting it tomorrow on the test. If you want to bring a highlighter to highlight that, you absolutely may. All right, keep, let's do our check. So checking it, it says T. So T was 0 0.7 plus 1.2. So we're going to do plus 1.2. All right, 7 and 2. Make sure those decimals are lined up, please. Mine are kind of a little, little off there. Yeah, that's better. All right, 7 plus 2 is 9. Keep my decimal, and 0 plus 1 is 1. So 1.9 and 1.9 match. So our answer was good. All right, number 8, 18. Number 18, almost there. So here again, I see that they're right next to each other. 1.2F is right next to each other, so that's multiplication. The opposite is 2 divide, using that fraction bar. So I'm going to divide, and if I divide that side by 1.2, I have to divide the other side by 1.2. Guys, remember that right there, that's half your points, just by being able to put that 1.2 on the bottom. All right, now doing that division, that's going to be the other half, which is just important. But just for doing that and setting that up correctly, you're getting points, all right? So my 1.2 and 1.2 go away, leaving me with F. Keep my equal sign. All right, so this is where I'm going to have to go to the side again. So 6 is on top, so I'm going to put 6 in the door. In the house, I'm sorry. In the house, and 1.2 is on bottom, so that's going to go at the door. All right, so let's look at this very carefully. All right, we can't have a decimal at the door, so we move it over. All right, but 6 doesn't have a decimal. So remember, with whole numbers, we just add it to the end, and I still move it over once place. Remember, what's going to, go half, what's going to have to go in that placeholder? All right, we're going to fill it in with a 0, because 0 is our ultimate placeholder. All right, so now it says 12 will go into 60. Oh, well, that's easy. That's one of our multiplication facts. 12 goes into 60 five times because 5 times 12 is 60. So here I get 5 equals F. Perfect. All right, and now I'm going to check it. So it said 1.2 F. So let's check. So 1.2 was first. So I'm going to do 1.2. F was right next to it. Remember, that means multiplication. So I'm going to do times. And we found out F was 5. Okay, 5 times 2 is 10. Carry the 1. 5 times 1 is 5, plus 1 is 6. All right? And if you'll look, there was one number after the decimal, so I'm going to put one number after the decimal, making it 6.0. You guys remember 6.0 and 6. They are the same thing. So we did have the right answer. All right, 5 is good. All right, last ones. Last ones. I have R divided by 3. Remember when we see that fraction bar, that's division. Opposite of dividing is to multiply. So I'm going to put times 3 next to r, and I'm going to put times 3 next to 7. Okay? Let's see the easy part. 3 on top, 3 on bottom. Leaves me with just r. Alright, 3 times 7 over here. That's one that's easy I can do in my head. 21. I like it when I can do it in my head. That makes life a little bit faster. Alright, so now let's check it. Checking it, it says R divided by 3. So I have 21 on top, which means 21 is going in the house. 
divided by 3 on the bottom. 3 will go into 21. 7 times. 7 times 3 is 21. So that worked out well. I have 7, and it said 7. All right, last one. Sorry, I'm kind of speeding up on these last few. All right, this says addition. Opposite of adding is subtracting. The number that's next to y is the 9. So we're taking away 9 from both sides. My 9s cancel, leave me with y, equals 48 minus 9 is going to give me 59, I believe. All right, subtraction always makes me a little bit nervous, which is why I love being able to check my work here. All right, so I'm going to check it, make sure I did that correctly. Makes me nervous when no one's in here to double check me. Y'all know y'all usually catch my mistakes, all right? So let's check it out. So it said 9, so I'm going to put 9 on top, plus y, which is 59. All right, you'll see how I line my ones place up. I know it looks kind of backwards. Usually we put the big one on top. But just make sure those ones are lined up. 9 plus 9 is 18. Carry your 1. 1 plus 5 is 6. So I got 68, which means I made a mistake, y'all. Oh, my goodness gracious. I said 48 minus 9 is 59. How can I subtract and get a bigger number? All right. Man, I'm so glad I checked this. We're going to pretend that was planned, okay, guys? We're going to pretend it was planned. All right. So let's try that again. 48 minus 9 is going to be 39, right? Someone, you'll double check me over there at home. 39. Okay. So then down here when I'm checking it, see y'all, look. This is why we use pencil because you can erase, right? So now we're going to add 39 to this. Let's see if that works out. 9 plus 9 is 18. I carry my 1. 1 and 3 is 4. Yes! Now we've got the right answer. Guys, do y'all see how I was able to find my mistake? Like, I didn't have to wait for y'all to, like, text me to me. Say, Miss Sawyer, you messed up on number 20. I found it by checking. All right? This is going to be a huge help to you tomorrow on your quiz. All right, guys. Thank you for checking your work. If you have more questions or if you're confused about anything or if there are problems that you're like, I don't get these, please come see me in the morning. I know this is a really long video, but y'all are awesome. Have a good night.